Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time again for another devotional, and we are uh, talking about uh, Psalm chapter 51, where David uh, has been confronted with the prophet uh, Nathan, and he Nathan is talking about David's sin, and David responds with grief and sorrow and pain and anguish, and he uh, writes, records this psalm as a, re a response. And I, I wanted to talk to you about this psalm and, and how it really outlines for us three steps and a movement toward God as we grow, whether we're, we're just coming to know God or we're, whether we've known God for years and years, this is a process, an outline for us to move always closer uh, to God. And so I wanted to talk to you some more about these steps uh, today. But before we do, uh, let's have a prayer together. Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your graces given to us. Once again, we ask for your grace as we are a part uh, physically, we ask you to be with us in, in spirit and that you would unify us. And for those of us who are lonely, for those of us who are hurting, or for those in our world, in our county, and uh, around the globe who are suffering a sense of loss, we, we lift our hearts to you and we ask that you would be with us and bring healing to us, this desperately needed uh, healing touch from your Holy Spirit. Bless us now as we go into your word. May we find something of grace uh, in the truth that we find there and something that would change us and draw us closer to Jesus, your son. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are excited about, again, uh, we, we talked to, uh, yesterday about the upcoming uh, uh, Sunday service for Easter. We are excited about what the potential of, of coming together, and I hope that you'll be with us on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, we'll give you the time uh, for that service. We have not decided on the time yet, but we'll give you that time and we'll, we'll advertise that. And uh, we ask you to continue to, to look at um, uh, the, uh, the website and Facebook uh, for information uh, as we draw near to that time and uh, for other is issues. And we'll give you all the information that we have as a church and what's going on in our church and uh, in the Methodist Church, etc. Um, we, uh, we do want to remind you that there is a prayer box in the parking lot. If you ever have a prayer need and you want to drop by and put a, a prayer request in the drop box, you can tell others in, in Henderson that that's there for them as well. Uh, we want to pray for the people in, 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 our, in our church and in our city. Um, we also, if you want to text me a prayer request or email me a prayer request, um, that information is on the website as far as uh, how to get to a uh, how to get a prayer request to us. And we will, as always, we treat those prayer requests very seriously and we pray for those things. Um, so uh, the, the Psalm 51, uh, yesterday we talked about how Psalm 51, uh, David's first step toward God was to look inside and to admit his wrong. Uh, the second step in a movement toward God is to look up. The first step is to look in. The second step is to look up. Um, and that's represented in uh, verse, uh, chapter 51, verses 7 to 12. And I want to read those verses for you now. Uh, this is what David says after he has admitted his wrong uh, to God. He says, cleanse me with hyssop. Now, I need to explain to you what hyssop is. Hyssop was a particular branch that the, uh, of, of, uh, like a tree branch that the, the priests would use um, in, the, in, the sacrificing, in, the, in the sacrificial system. And the way I understand it is that they would dip the hyssop, a branch of hyssop, in the blood, and they would sprinkle the artifacts in the altar uh, with the blood to purify uh, the altar and purify the artifacts in, 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 the, uh, in the temple. And so this hyssop, uh, what David is saying was, was when he's saying, cleanse me with hyssop, he's, he's basically saying, cover me with the blood. blood. Forgive me, um, um, purify me. So that's what his prayer uh, request is there. So it says, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me, he let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Now this is again, uh, that, that phrase is just so powerfully graphic. Um, to to D David, he's felt the guilt of, of Nathan the prophet, com prophet coming in and and saying you you did this and he's he's crushed under the the realization of his guilt and he's his head is bowed and he's on his knees he's bowed before god and he's being crushed before god and he's asking god to restore him he's looking up he's he's looked inside now he's looking up and he's, he's saying do something about uh my, my situation um says he says hide uh, your face 
from my sin and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a, a clean heart. One verse, the King James Version says, create in me a clean heart. That's the, that's the most famous version of that. And, and NIV says, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Now, uh, this is, I would recommend this ver these verses as a, a per, as just kind of if you want to make the memory verses, King James is beautiful in its language. I, I would memorize that and just make that a prayer four times when you feel like you've done wrong or and and, and you you feel like you're distanced from God uh, to say, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit with me. Cast me not away from Thy presence, O Lord, and and take not Thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of Thy salvation. And renew a right spirit with me. Those are that's a wonderful prayer uh, from the psalm to memorize. That's King James. I was just I was just using. So he's looking inside, and and you can only the first step in moving to God is, is to look inside, and you can only look inside so long. Looking inside is 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 profitable, but it can only you can only do look inward so long. You you can be you can come into despair and brokenness and just devastation by looking if you're constantly looking inside. If that's the only thing that you're doing is looking inside, then it will end in despair. There's no hope in just looking inward. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, there's it, it's it, you know there's a, looking inside. If you look, constantly looking inside, it's a it's a life with no up. It's a life with no up, and so um, there's a there's a, a famous poem that I I like. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of this from uh, W. B. Yeats, and he says he says this. Um, it's 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 a response to just basically a life that's lived with no up, a, a, a life on earth that has lost its hope that there's no hope of an afterlife, there's no hope in our suffering and those kind of things. And he says this, and it's just a profound statement. He says, now that my ladder is gone, I must lie down where all ladders start. Let me read that to you again. Now that my ladder is gone, I must lie down while all, where all ladders start. In other words, um, the ladder's gone, so I'm just gonna lay down where the, where the, where the footing of the ladder was. Um, that's his, that's that he's basically saying that's the end of hope. Um, all we have is inward looking. All we have is the life down here. There's no up to our life. There's no end uh, light at the end of the tunnel for us. Uh, that is the hopeless life of someone who constantly looks inward and never looks up. But the, the encouragement of, of Psalm 51 is to look up and to say, yes, you, you admit your guilt, you confess, you hum, hum a man, that's, uh, you, 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 you confess, your, you say the same thing about your sin as God. But then uh, the marvelous thing is you look up and you say, God, I've confessed. Now I'm looking up to you, God, for the answer. I, I'm asking you to restore into me, into me this hope that, that, that confession is not the end of the story, that guilt is not the end of the story but that Jesus came and he died for our sins to take away our guilt and to save us from our sins. And when we look inside, the next step, the second step to moving toward God is look inside first. The next step is to look up. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. And, and so when we, we can picture it in a, in a very graphic and visible way, when we take our sins to the cross, we come with head bowed, and at some point, we look up to Jesus, who has been lifted up, and we see that he has died for, for our sins. And his death and his suffering was on our behalf, so that we would not die and we would not suffer. And this is God's greatest gift to humanity, that he died for our sins. And now we have a hope of life everlasting. So that's the second step. The first step is to look inside. The second step, and don't forget the second step, and don't get caught and don't get stuck in looking inside. The second step and quickly is to look up and to see that our Savior reigns and lives to save our souls. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for the grace that we receive even when we feel guilty for sin. This grace that shows us that there is hope in looking up. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. 
And we know that you, God, are this source of help. You are the source of hope, this source of forgiveness, and sanctification, and you change our lives because you are an all-powerful Father who loves us very much. I pray for everyone who's watching this recording that you would touch the hearts and the lives of those who need desperately to receive this absolute forgiveness from your throne of grace. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Have a wonderful day and a blessed day.